I am Amanda Mason, and my brother's name is Dakota. He was born March of 1997. We were really close throughout our childhood. As we grew older, we grew apart. Something happened to him. Something he would never open up to me about. He disappeared May of 2019. And that's why I'm making this documentary. To find out what happened to my brother. To uncover the facts that investigators were unable to. What did he see? What did he experience? I want to find the truth. Welcome to Have They Stopped Screaming, where we're all about having a screaming good time. I'm your host, Scott Stick, with Joshua Brooker. Uh, we're going to be talking with him today about his upcoming film, Mothman 2022. Welcome, Joshua. How are you today? Good. How are you? I am well. I am well. Uh, so let's get right down to it. Uh, Mothman, it's been around since the 60s. Why Mothman? What is it about this story that uh, attracted you so much to want to make a movie? Yeah, so, um, you know, I've been wanting to make a movie for a number of years now. And uh, at this point in my life, I've kind of got to where I'm comfortable. Um, me and my fiance are in a good spot where I could actually focus my attention on it. And uh, it kind of doesn't disrupt our, you know, family dealings. Um, but back in... Uh, the summer of 2020, uh, I visited Point Pleasant with my family over our summer vacation that we do every year. We always visit Ohio, and we decided that Point Pleasant wasn't too far, so we, you know, paid it a visit, and it kind of stuck with me. You know, as a kid, I kind of watched, like, the uh, documentaries on, um, I think the History Channel had, like, uh, Monster Quest. Um, that was back when I was, like, in high school. I know uh, a little bit before then, Animal Planet had the um, dark tapes or something similar to that. Um, but yeah, like my interest in cryptid started when I was young. And uh, I've always been a found, uh, found footage fan my whole entire life. You know, I was like 12 when we rented the VHS tape from Blockbuster of uh, the Blair Witch Project. Um, so it kind of just started there. And, and to me, honest with you now, like as an adult and an avid lover of horror, like found footage is really what like will scare me today. <laughs> it's just, it kind of puts you in the place, it puts it sets you right where the cameraman's at. And it, if you've got a dark room, dark house, everything's quiet. And the only thing you're paying attention to is the screen and it kind of, it's immersing. And I feel like uh, the Mothman story it's it's more um, layered than like any other cryptid, I would say. Uh, Sanchez he he made the uh, that Bigfoot uh, found footage film not too long ago. There's only so much you could do with Bigfoot, really, right? Um, I think that the story of Mothman um, there's a lot to tell there, and there's also a lot to play with as a you know uh, being a creative person like myself and developing a story like that. Yeah, Bigfoot. Uh, that's interesting. You say that I grew up uh, see seeing the original quote unquote found footage of the man in the you know, well, some people say he's a man in a in a hairy suit. But I remember seeing that in a show called In Search Of with Leonard Nimoy. And I was just absolutely fascinated. I thought, is it really possible that there's a creature like this roaming the backwoods of, of America? Uh, I I love the stories where they start the movie with based on a true story. There's mm. something very creepy to me about that. I, I love documentaries. I love true stories uh, because I know they really happened. And mm. so I, I can see the attraction to found footage. The idea is that this really happened. This really happened to people. There's something very intriguing about that. Talk talk more about your interest in found footage because I know we've talked about it a couple of times. So I can see that it's a it's a hot button for you. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, um, like growing up, um, I wouldn't say I was ever truly terrified of horror. I think I was intrigued by like the creative aspects of it. I felt like um, as a filmmaker, um, there's more to play with. You can be very artistically creative as far as that goes. And there's a whole range of uh, types of storytelling that people can find horrifying. And uh, it's very subjective. And I think that's what I like about the found footage genre uh, in and of itself is that, um, like I said previously, it just kind of puts you in the place of um, where the filmmakers are at. And that's kind of, and it's, it's very personal too. Um, it's a very personal way of telling a story. And my movie uh, is very emotional. Um, it's a sister is looking for her missing brother. So there's more to this movie than just it's not just a, it's not just a horror movie, ba- you know, designed to uh, uh, scare you or shock you. Uh, I like that. I, it's it sounds more there's a lot more depth to a story like this. And we're just trying to scare you. Uh, right. it, it's really not about that. Your your movie is more of uh, this really happened. Uh, people were really affected. Basically, the plot follows a uh, young woman by the name of uh, Amanda Mason, and she's been away from home, and uh, the story is set in Ohio. So she's been gone. Um, her brother went missing two years ago, and she didn't come home to help look for him. Um, she had personal reasons for not returning, um, but she does now, and she's looking to make a documentary. And she brings her uh, colleague and boyfriend with her uh, to act as like the cameraman, uh, run audio and everything. So through a series of interviews, uh, she meets with uh, her parents that she hasn't seen in years. Um, She meets with a lot of the key players that were involved with uh, trying to find her brother at that time. She meets with some of his friends, uh, his former girlfriend. And things like that. And she really starts to understand uh, who her brother is through this series of interviews because she realizes early on that the brother that she had left behind uh, really wasn't the brother that she thought she had. There was something deeper in him that uh, she wasn't quite uh, ready to see for herself. And um, just that right there uh, doesn't really scream horror at you, right? Like it's a. Uh, it's it's very much like a drama. Oh yeah, definitely. The more you describe what's going on, uh, it is definitely more of a drama. I I like it a lot. It it sounds. I I like the title Mothman Twenty Twenty Two. I think it it draws people in. Just just saying the word Mothman, I immediately had some kind of idea of what this was about. I'd seen the 2002 Mothman movie with Richard Gere and was introduced to the legend of Mothman. When did you decide to you know, move forward with this project? Well, it has been an idea that I've been working on for a little while. Um, it just basically started with every time I got an idea, I just typed a note out on my phone. Um, then eventually it kind of started looking more like a story. And uh, I'm friends with filmmakers on Facebook. Uh, I chat with them almost every day. And uh, a friend of mine is also working through his movie too. And uh, another friend is about to finish his. And I just, him and I were talking and just basically he asked me why I'm not pursuing it. And I didn't have a good answer. <laughs> so uh, um, I kind of wrote a script. Uh, I put that together. And that process is always fun. Um, you know, I've been writing screenplays, you know, on my own. I'm kind of self-taught um, on how to do that. But the interesting thing is I know when I'm on to a, a good topic is when I can't stop writing. You know, if I feel like I'm writing and I'm like 30 pages in and I'm like, what are these characters doing? I know it's not something to really pursue uh, at that time. Uh, But I didn't feel that way with this one. 
and it, everything kind of fell into place. I put together a, a Facebook group to try to kind of put this together. Um, I started working with some people and we put together a concept trailer. Um, I got a, the voiceover from our lead actress that's going to be in there to kind of present the story as it is. And um, suddenly I kind of realized that this is more than just a concept, that this is an idea that I should go with. And like I said, I visited uh, Point Pleasant in 2020. And ever since then, it's a very immersive experience. If, if you have ever been or if anybody who's ever listened has ever been or watched has ever been, um, you know, these are places that I've watched in, you know, like TV documentaries my whole life. Um, and like you said, with the Richard Gere uh, movie and everything, and actually being there in Point Pleasant and seeing everything that I had seen before, uh, it kind of speaks to you a little bit. At least it spoke to me. And uh, I felt like the Mothman story itself is much greater than and there's a cryptid lurking in the woods just waiting to jump out at you when you're driving around at night. Um, it's not really that. And I think that appealed to me the most. I've I've got my own, uh, you know, mysteries that I've, I've been interested over the years. And I go to those places where these things uh, occurred. And there is something that it's hard to put your, it's hard to describe what it is like to be in those places. It's, it's, you know, the, the story of Mothman uh, and the events that happened, uh, you know, which people believe were connected to uh, the Mothman phenomenon happened uh, many years ago. And some of the same things, stories that I'm interested in happened in many years ago. And there's something about it takes me back in time. I, I find myself imagining what it was like to be in that place. I see that Mothman 2022 has these aspects of going back in time, talk about characters, realizing there's more going on with uh, the people they're searching for, the stories. They're finding out uh, about these, uh, about the people they're looking for. They're finding out the true story of these people. I noticed you were wearing uh, the uh, Halloween t-shirt, yeah. one of my absolute favorite movies of all time. Uh, and it centers around, you know, the story of a family torn apart by a young man who, you know, suffers from some horrible, you know, something horrible has happened to him. And, and it's, a, it's, it's not just a horror movie. Uh, it's what it is, is it's this story of Michael Myers, Laurie Strode, who are they? What happened to them? How do they deal with, how do they, with the, with what happened? Uh, and it's a fascinating study of, um, people trying to come to grips with uh, a, a, a tragedy, horrible tragedy that, that happens to them. And, and you know, these are, are timeless stories. And um, for what you're describing to me is it sounds like another kind of those timeless stories of people trying to come to grips with who they are and who their, who their family members are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, definitely. And more so for um, the lead character, Amanda, because she has to, she's also struggling with her own guilt about sort of leaving her brother behind. And maybe that if uh, she had been around um, during his period of uh, uh, descent, I guess, if you will, um, she could have been there to help him. But um, like we always say about those things in our own personal lives, um, try not to dwell on them too much. But, you know, as humans, the that's like our nature to <laughs> worry about things that we can't change. Right. 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 It's, it is what it is. What's done is done. How cool that you've got friends that, you know, pushed you along and said, Hey, Joshua, you know, you've got, you've got these great ideas rolling around and, and, and you need to take it to the next level. Talk about, you know, being an independent filmmaker, being a screenwriter, being a writer, um, how, you know, what is that like? And, and what are some of the highs and lows of, of that? I haven't really experienced any lows yet. Uh, perhaps maybe when we start filmmaking, um, 
actually filming the movie itself. Um, from what I've been warned, there's lots of peaks and valleys when it comes to that. Uh, it's exhilarating, I would say. Um, I've always, you know, my high has always been uh, creative output. So anytime I ever put anything out, it always makes me feel good. Um, and I like to bounce ideas off of people because I think that's really the only way that we can grow as artists. Um, because I think filmmaking and writing and everything like that is an art. So um, it requires some type of, um, well, just a tiny bit even, uh, collaboration with your peers. And by doing so, I feel like and it's kind of brought me out a bit. It's given me also the confidence to kind of put together this project because I know that people are going to watch it. I know that people are going to see this and I know that people are following everything we're putting out into social media and kind of the group that we're building and the fan base that we're building with our audience. Uh, we created a Facebook group called uh, Mothman 2022 official group. And basically that's the platform I've been using to sort of disseminate uh, any announcements that we have. It must be exciting for you to see more and more people following the progress of, of Mothman 2022. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. You know, I've been sharing like news of the movie and things like that. in a lot of the um, supernatural encrypted Facebook groups I follow also. So, you know, mostly people I've never interacted with in my life are kind of reaching out to me and you know, I've even had people approach me with stories that they have of, of witnessing Mothman, even in their own lives. So it's been kind of interesting to be able to, to like meet people at that level and have them feel safe enough to talk to me about that kind of thing, you know? Fantastic. I know you've got, you've got new, you know, people coming on board. It seems like daily, how are you reaching out to and finding, you know, technical people, of, you know, acting or actors, how are you, how are you actually sourcing these uh, individuals? I used a uh, platform called backstage.com uh, to do my initial casting call for, for my main cast. Um, so put all the, uh, the roles on there. I started out of Cincinnati. So we're going to be filming about two hours to the West of Cincinnati. That's like the closest, um, um, I guess would you say cultural center, large city near it. So we started there and uh, kind of worked our way down. So once we had um, people apply, we sent out uh, requests for auditions. We get auditions back. Uh, we decide who we feel best fits the roles that we developed. And we kind of go from there. Um, a lot of my crew actually consists of um, people that I have always known, or at least have known for years. Um, a lot of them are willing to travel close to... Uh, help work with me on this. A um, couple other people actually would uh, have reached out to me since we really started um, putting this this film together and really pushing it on social media. That presence, people are seeing that it's a movie, something that they're interested in, and you know, offering their services. And back and forth go, and we kind of decide on who to bring on board. It's uh, it's been kind of it's not as cut and dry as uh, maybe one would, I guess, you know, put a uh, flyer out and you get in people who are interviewing and things. Um, it's kind of just come together naturally, more or less. That's awesome. So my friend Todd Matthews, I find out, is part of Mothman 2022. I've known Todd for a number of years now, and uh, he contacted me and said, hey, Scott, you should talk to Joshua. He's doing this cool new movie, Mothman 2022. Tell us a little bit about how Todd ends up in this film and the character that he plays. Yeah. Um, so basically, Todd reached out to me personally um, after uh, my actress, Liz Fletcher, started sharing things because they had uh, previously worked together in another project that she had been on. And... Uh, him and I started talking back and forth. He's a really interesting guy. And um, I had a character that um, I wasn't necessarily focused on filling that role at that time. Uh, I was just a day player. Uh, his, his role was super minuscule. Um, I was going to kind of worry 
about that on the back end once we get funding and once we get the ball rolling on really moving this movie forward. And after talking to Todd, um, I was like, oh my God, I feel like he fits this character. And the character goes by the name of Max and he is sort of a cryptozoologist author um, that kind of specializes in the Mothman um, folklore. And he's from Point Pleasant in the story. And um, I felt like Todd, you know, could bring a level of authenticity to this. Uh, that's why I expanded the character even more than just what I had initially planned. So that's the great thing about trying to be creative here. And we could really feed off of our actors and actresses to kind of put together a, a, a more believable film. And I think what uh, Todd brings to this is believability. Uh, he's very, he's animated. He's super interested in like almost everything he's involved in. <laughs> uh, That's right. And I think that, that, uh, he'll he'll bring life to this character and that's kind of what we look for when we're casting um like a pseudo documentary found footage film is we want our actors and actresses to bring these characters to life take them right out of the paper because like i said before it is very personal it's a very personal story and when you're watching a pseudo documentary or a found footage um everybody always you know attacks the credibility right like do these people seem real do they seem like actors um is there a reason why they're still filming these are all questions we have to sort of navigate through as found footage filmmakers and my whole cast i feel personally does a wonderful job at uh, bringing that to life and that's again why we brought todd in and uh his character is certainly gonna uh, play a huge role in the film too well, it makes sense. Uh, you know, Todd Matthews helped f found the Doe Network, which is all about real life mysteries, missing and unidentified persons. And so when you say that Todd brings a real life, um, you know, he brings his experience, it makes complete sense to me. I think it's a wonderful choice. Uh, just knowing Todd and knowing his enthusiasm for so many of the things he gets involved in, I think it's a fantastic uh, addition. And I'll be really interested to see his character and, and how it plays out. Yeah, fantastic. Sure. One of the locations you're going to shoot this film is Hocking Hill State Park in Logan, Ohio. Yep. This I was looking at this location online. It's got some very interesting places. I, I like I like the 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 choice. Uh, why this state park? Again, it was another location that spoke to me when I visited uh, last year. Uh, like I said, we visit Ohio every uh, every summer for family. We spend a week with them, and uh, we were kind of looking for certain things to do that was kind of outside what we normally do. So uh, typically we spend the week with family uh, visiting a local theme park there, Kings Island near Cincinnati. Um, but we were kind of getting out of the box and seeing what, what else there is, what else the area has to offer. And uh, I had watched a, uh, the most recent Wrong Turn movie that was made a couple of years ago. And it was filmed primarily in Hawking Hills State Park. I watched the movie, I love the area. I, I did my research into Hocking Hills. It was a beautiful place. Uh, me and the family visited and we hiked the main trail that's mostly advertised as far as uh, walking through the gorge and everything that kind of runs through there. It is a very beautiful place. It's eerie to a certain extent. It's very thick. Um, I can understand why a filmmaker would want to use that as a setting to kind of create mystery. If that makes sense. That makes sense. That that was my impression as I was looking at pictures. What do you see Mothman 2022 adding to the story of Mothman? You know, there's kind of a contention between people, uh, believers in Mothman, whether he's um, somebody to fear. You know, I've, I've heard a lot of people talking about um, like, what if he's not here to to terrify us and what if there's a layer to him that we don't understand because we're too busy being afraid um and i think that's the question that the missing brother in my story kind of quarrels with because like i said this is a found footage film it's kind of uh it opens and closes more like a pseudo documentary 
would be, but the middle portion, uh, our main characters find his uh, own personal um, SD cards and cell phone. So they recover footage that the missing brother had put together before he went missing. And that is more found footage um, filmed in that style. And uh, we kind of learned that he has an experience. Uh, he witnesses what he thinks to be Mothman. And he starts to uh, suffer a bit psychologically. Uh, he wrestles with, like, why did Mothman choose him? particularly is there something about him that he needs to prepare for uh he knows about you know the harbinger of doom aspect is so he worries about the community that he lives in and something terrible can happen to everybody around him or or is it more personal like i had already said is it something that uh, he needs to focus on himself to learn and a lot of you know the the terrifying aspects of this film uh, if you would say, you know, the scares and everything like that do exist around the brother trying to find um, answers to that question. And it takes him to places that um, we hope uh, are awfully terrifying. Oh, that sounds perfect. I, that's, that's my kind of film, Mothman 2022. Joshua Brooker, when does this um, film start shooting and when will it be released, you think? Well, we're planning on shooting in the uh, second week of May coming up. And uh, as far as editing goes, I'd like to see the film released around October. Fantastic. Well, Joshua Brooker, you're going to have your work cut out for you. Thanks so much for joining us on Have They Stopped Screaming? And we will look forward to seeing Mothman 2022 when it is released. And we know you're busy, so we're going to let you get back to it. Thanks again. All right. Thank you.